hand out, we take three of them and then pass them on. Sure. We'd be fabulous. Um, yes, thanks to Angela for asking me to come and speak to you guys. I get to play with my plays in public, so I uh, hope you'll enjoy it. Um, and as you'll see, I'm actually filming this because my advice to you would be any time you stand up and speak, record it. Record it because, um, you know, you're creating content at the speed of sound. Any time you stand up and speak, any time you stand up and teach, um, catch it because you never know. <coughs> you never know. And I was told that by many a coach over the years and I kind of went, yeah, 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 I know that. And I never did. And I kind of wish I had. Um, now I have quite a, a library of stuff that uh, has built up over the years. So what I'd like to uh, introduce myself to you, um, my name is John Clark. My background is NLP and hypnosis. Um, one of the things that I think Lake touched on was just smashing. And one of the things that I thought well, on the flip chart, reasons why goals don't, don't work, one of them is speed of success. A lot of people are terrified that it might work. Mm -hmm. What will people think of me if I'm, you know, if I'm making more money than my dad ever made per my presentation? And then, Um, what if I make more money than my dad ever did? What if, what if my friends don't like what I do? What if I'm super successful? What if I end up on the telly? A lot of people are terrified of that. And a lot of celebrities find out the hard way all the repercussions that they didn't anticipate. One of the things from hypnosis we know, go back to the six pack analogy and the weight loss analogy. I often ask my client, can you make a picture of yourself with the six pack? Can you see yourself clearly in your mind's eye the target weight you want to be? And very often they can't. And that's one of the reasons why they haven't got the goal yet. Because if you can't visualize it, if your unconscious cannot get a picture of that, how can you, how can you uh, program the sat app if you don't know the postcode? It's like, you know, your brain doesn't know what you want, so how can it get you there? Your, your unconscious mind is like Google, type in whatever, whatever you want, it'll go and find you an answer. Even if the answer is I don't have an answer, <laughs> it will come back with an answer. You always ask an answer a question in your head, don't you? Thank you. So, <laughs> <laughs> you program your unconscious mind and knows what to do. I'm going to give you something that's a little more practical today. So, I, I'm, I, I have been to many a training course, many a seminar where the trainer and the speaker gave me some good theory and some clever one-liners and some nice fluffy stuff that looks good in the Hallmark card. But when I went out of the room, I didn't really have anything I could use. I, I, could, I, I, you know, I was in a wee bubble, positivity for three or four days, and then the bubble burst. You know, you've got Tony Robbins seminar, you feel like you change the world! <laughs> Three days later, you know, I've spent six hundred quid recording our seminar. You know, and I don't want that to be like that at all. So I love Angela's work. I think Angela's work is profound, and I'm into profound. My clients pay me to get them a result. So I want to give you something you can take away and use today. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go through this kind of quickly, because there's a lot in it. So I'm giving you a handout to make it really easy. Um, let me show you what I do. Uh, my business is all about um, helping clients become a recognised expert in their industry. So what we do is we make our client the most visible person in their niche in what they do. So we can only really work with one person per industry per city. So if I'm working with a chiropractor, that chiropractor becomes the most visible chiropractor in Glasgow, bar none. Because if someone in Google's Glasgow chiropractor, they're going to see their website, their blog, their podcast, their iTunes, their YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, landing page, articles, podcast, because we need to take over. So we can only really work with one person per industry, um, but it's per city, so we can kind of float about a little bit. So recognised expert status in the industry is what we're aiming for, always, always, always. More visible than the competition, so they dominate their field. Imagine if you were the only property person in your city that's visible, right? Imagine if uh, Jack's Asbestos was the most visible asbestos company in Central Scotland. Do you think you might get more business? Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> Just a bit. Um, you also then start to attract a better quality and quantity of clients. So you get more clients, but they're better clients, if, you, if I can be that judgmental. You get a better quality of client. And people tend to know people of the same caliber, right? So if you've got a high-end client, they tend to refer you to other high-end clients. Um, what I'm going to share with you today is advertising that lasts forever. Lifetime advertising, as long as it's an interweb you will have advertising out there forever more if you use what I'm about to give you today. And most of it, by the way, is one of my favorite words. Free, free, free. Fantastic. <laughs> um, would you like more leads? 
Yes. More employees? Yes. yes. More sales? Yes. Because yes. isn't business about building clients and making money? Yep. When it boils down to it, building clients, make them happy, and get paid as a result. Serving people, helping people, solving headaches, and get paid as a result. Isn't that really what it's all about? And then you use those funds to finance the lifestyle that you want. You work to earn money to do stuff you want to do when you're not at work. So, financial security for you and your family. More free time for the things that matter. Kids, fun stuff. You know, a week in Devon last week, it was very, very cool. I was on a hovercraft. My wee boy's carrying a transformer that turned pills into a hovercraft. <laughs> and I'm like, this is great. This is what it's all about. That's why you're self-employed, surely. That's why you're in, you're in business, surely. It's for this stuff. It's not to be doing invoicing, admin, building lifts. It's to be having fun with your wee boy in a hovercraft. That's what it's about. And leaving a legacy, like the empire we built, acquiring the business and then walking away, handing the house to your son or daughter and going, there you go. Okay? So this is what we do. This is the world I live in, and I love every bloody minute of it. It's fantastic. Um, why should you listen to me? Because I've made absolute fortune for the publicity stills. Um, I'm a Google agency. I'm a master hypnotherapist, which basically means I'm allowed to train people in hypnosis. Um, I'm a trainer of NLP. I used to be a direct consultant and a regional trainer for BNI. Um, I've written six best-selling books so far. My goal is 25, so the goal I just set was 25 novels in five years' time. I've worked with people 5,000 hours of one-to-one -one consultations so far. Um, I get asked to speak and stuff because I love it. I was terrified of speaking in school. Uh, I had an ulcer by the time I was 19. I was shy and scared and, and timid and I burned a hole in my stomach. I had a duodenal ulcer by the time I was 19 because I was so nervous. And I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I got into all this stuff to fix my head. I never anticipated ever working with anybody else. So I'm sitting in Shireen Nanjiani's house fixing her moth phobia to appear in the Fred Macaulay show. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, how did that happen? Do you know? Bizarre, bizarre, bizarre. Um, Morgan Stanley had me come in to do some training with them. We did a two-day training on language. Who was talking about language earlier on? We did a two-day training on language. The sales went up 40%. It's not bad. I should have charged a retainer fee. I just charged a fixed fee. What was I thinking? <laughs> um, I'd like to the Peter Jones um, Entrepreneur Academy. Tom Hunter Entrepreneur Centre. My first business was 19 years old. Um, I kind of got the bug for working for yourself and the harder I work, the more I earn. Because in the employee world where I used to be, I had a direct entry manager who was paid more than me and did less than me. And I went, how does that work? I'm working my ads off and you're sitting back getting more. How does that work? I believe the harder I work, the more I should earn. If I coast, I earn less. I think that's fair. Um, so that's always what I've done. I was an eBay power seller, I've got an Amazon business, and so you know I'll be talking later on. And uh, yeah, he's a financial advisor, ironically. So that's who I am. Some famous clients, Morgan Stanley, Big Shireen. Um, I'm on a friend of show. Every, every year they do a new year, new you thing. So I'm in fixings. We're standing in a lift in the BBC studios with a tarantula in a box. And somebody in the lift stupidly said, Is that a tarantula? I've never seen a lift empty so fast in my life. It's unbelievable. <laughs> So I do stuff like that. Reader Clay, Barclays, the Herald, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I have done what you've probably all done or are doing, taking out adverts in newspapers, buying those calendar things that businesses sell with all the related businesses around the corners. You know that kind of stuff? Never use a word. Thompson's Yellow Pages. I used to do Thompson advertising all the time. I could always double book the appointment because the Thompson's leads would never show up. It's really interesting that. Um, 6,000 pounds on a drive time advert for Reader Clay. One week's advertising, I bought a domain name called um, Get Your Arse Into Gear. They said you can't say arse on the radio and gear means drugs. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't to that. That was one of my first websites. The world's worst ever website. Did it myself. But hey, it made my phone ring. And I'm all about making my phone ring. I I'll have a crappy website all day long as long as it's made my phone ring. I don't care. I'm not there to win awards, I'm there to make business. Um, done leaflets, done postcards, done all that stuff. Been there, seen it, done it. There are 53 ways to get clients that I know of. And I've tried them all. Some of them work, some of them don't. Some of them work in some industries, some of them don't work in some industries. I'm going to share with you a recipe today that works in any industry. And if you do it, and I hope you do, you get more leads, more inquiries, more sales, forever. And most of it is free. 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 <laughs> if you don't use it, nothing's going to change. So, talk to you. Blow the line, blow the line, quick. Um, so this is called Dominate Your Field and Make More Sales with Lifetime Advertising that Brings Your Clients Now and Forever. Can I punch a headline? Does that appeal? Would you like to know how? Excellent. Okay. I'm going to teach you a very quick thing. Um, Tom knows all about this stuff. Content marketing. Right now, 
go back, go back to the what's the, what's the phrase? Back in the day, I hate that phrase. Back in the day, which is two thousand five, um, <laughs> you could put a website on Google and your phone would ring. Those days have gone. I hate to tell you. People put, oh, I'm going to get a nice shiny business card. I'm going to get a nice loose leaflet, and I'll have a website, and my phone is going to melt. Good luck with that plan. Because <laughs> probably not. You need to do a lot more now. And Google, who now own the internet, basically, or a big chunk of it. Um, Google don't want you to be a marketer. They want you to be a publisher. Google's a library. Remember the old TV advert with J.R.R. Hartley? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the guy goes and looks for fly fishing by J.R.R. Hartley, and the librarian goes off to find it. Yeah. That's what Google does. That's what all the search engines do. You type in something, it goes to find the most accurate that can fit to what you typed and brings it back to you. Right? So if it's as best as in Glasgow or Central Belt, you want it to be Jack's. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. If it's going to be property stuff, you want it to be you. If it's going to be Herbalife or fitness or nutrition, you want it to be late. Fashion, whatever. But Google is a librarian, and Google wants you to provide it content. It's a search engine. Unless you're on Amazon or eBay, you're probably not going on the internet to buy. You're probably going on the internet to learn or suss out or find out stuff or research. Yeah? And no one ever thought that we'd be standing looking at all this piece of glass that big. But we are now. There's, there's, I think, 20, 20 more phones than there are desktop computers. So everybody's now mobile. So you need to be found on that thing. If you're not found on that thing, you've got a challenge. So I'd like to help you get found on that thing. Is that okay? In many ways. Now, you're going to have to provide Google what it wants, which is content. So you can hear the phrase content marketing more and more and more, and all the big guys are doing this. Content marketing is basically how do you attract and retain customers through compelling story-based multi-channel information. Now, from the world of NLP and psychology, we know that 40% of the Western population are visual people. So you better provide stuff that people can see, because it's quick. I could describe this room in writing, or I could show you a photograph, which is quicker. Mm -hmm. You could pitch your business, or you could show me a video, which is quicker. So you need to provide visual information for the guys who like to watch. You also need to provide auditory information for the 10% who like to listen. And you need to provide 40% for the guys who like to do stuff. This is a seminar. This is a doing thing. Right? So a lot of kind of sex people come to seminar because they walk in, they meet, they press the flesh and they get to do stuff and they leave with handouts and stuff. Read mm -hmm. handouts in advance before the trade even starts speaking. Because <laughs> that's what they oh, I don't know what I'm getting for money. So you need to be doing this. If you're not doing this, you're kind of up against it because your competition are. But how if we made that really, really easy for you? Would you be interested? Yep. Excellent. Okay. All the senses. All the senses are important. All the senses are important. So, two keys to doing this. I'm going to share with you what I call the top 10 tip tip. The top 10 tip tip is when, when a client says to me, look, I've got a limited budget, I want big visibility, make me famous overnight. <laughs> big ask. I, uh, okay, guys, I'll say, I want to be number one to go. What's your budget? 200 quid. <laughs> Good luck with that. It's the top 10, 20 charts. And all those artists want to be number one. And some of them have got big pockets. And you might be a one man band, a one woman band operating off your kitchen table. You have big pockets. So how do you compete? This is how you compete. Okay, and right now you've got an opportunity to do this because people are only just catching on. I study everything happens in the States because everything happens in the States comes here like 18 months later. So if you watch what the States are doing, you get to know what's going to be here. If you do it now, you'll be an early adopter and you'll be in with the bricks before your competition even knows hit them. So two keys to doing what I'm going to share with you. The top 10 tip tip is a wee strategy I wish I developed it for clients. I wish I had it when I started in 1997. You guys are going to have a massive advantage over me. I'm jealous of you if you use it. If you don't use it, nothing's going to change. So please, 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 please use this. Maximum buying for your buck on a small, small, small budget. Two keys to doing this. Write fast and don't stop. Don't think, just write. And secondly, be prepared for it to be rubbish. Be prepared for it to be junky. When you pump the water pump, what comes out the water pump at first? You know the old pump with the big handle? What comes out the water pump first? Nothing. nothing. Then what starts to come out? Sludge. Then, if you keep pumping, then what comes out? Well, we are drinking more water, right? So be prepared for rubbish to come out your head initially, but keep going because the good stuff's underneath, right? Lake hinted about, Angela got you, she nailed you on, how's it going to feel? And you went, eh, fluff, 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 fluff. And we were hoping you would go, proud of achievement, success, right? Because you want that second level. The second level's where the magic is. So be prepared to dig. You're all looking at this, like, what's it going to make me do? <laughs> yes, I'm going to make you right. So, 
on your hand glitch, okay, talking through your hand glitch, page two, you will see the step, first step. First step of this is to begin your content marketing business by creating a top 10 list. 10 bullet points, really easy. Top 10 tips that you have about as investors. Top 10 mistakes that property investors make. Top 10 ways to build lifts and housing. Top 10 secrets of fashion. Top 10 whatever. Guiding principles, um, resources, warning signs, benefits. You know your industry inside out. My favourite is frequently asked questions. I bet you every day of your life, people ask you the same thing in your industry. And you hear yourself trotting out, the same kind of thing, day in, day out. Those are frequently asked questions. So how about you answer all those questions up front so that by the time you get the phone call, they already have the answer to that. You're pre-qualifying your, your, your clients. So I'd like you to come up with, not right now, but when you leave here today, come up with the top 10 list. FAQs of the best ones. So in property, maybe what, does people, what do people ask about plumbing, heating? What do they always ask? Uh, boilers. What do they uh, always ask? Uh, how much is it? No. Um, yeah. I, so you get things like... Green deal. Uh, green deal, green deal finance. The, right. Uh, how so, much? The flow rate of water. Yeah, the train you know, there's two shivers at one time. Right. Kind of Scrappage. Yeah. All that stuff. Right. So if you think about it, or just watch yourself over the next seven days, you hear yourself saying the same thing twice. Write it down. That's a, that's a frequently asked question. Okay. If you don't know, go on Google. Frequently asked questions in plumbing and heating. Google will tell you what they are. It's not hard. But come up with that top ten list. Do you think you could do that? Ten, ten ways to get a six pack. Ten exercises to get a six pack. Ten things that don't work in the gym. 10 things you should look at in the buy to let market. 10 ways people could con you in the buy to let market. That makes sense? Just a quick bullet list. Can we handle that? Yep. Dead easy. Okay. Once you've got your bullet points, here's what you do. You develop each one into a paragraph. So you take your first bullet point. So, is there still a scratch scheme for boilers? No. Right. Fantastic. Tell me a wee bit more about that. I'm going to get you a quick way to do this. It's called the format systems. It comes from NLP. Why? What's that scrapping scheme offered? What did the scrapping scheme look like? How did it work? Now that it's gone, what do we do? <clears throat> so the fourth question, why, what, how, and what if? I love, see, as an NLP trainer, I love it. I would, a, lot of, a lot of speakers don't take questions, they'll go, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> or, any questions? Now, as someone said, <laughs> I watched my wife buy this moisturising thing in, in the Fraser's one day and she said to the girl, does this stuff work if you go swimming? And the girl behind the counter said, absolutely! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, you still bought it? <laughs> who do you, ladies know this better than the guys, but who do you trust, what the body's telling you or what the mouth is telling you? Body. Body, because body's unconscious and the unconscious never lies. I'll definitely be at your party. I did not have sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> it leaks out. That's the wrong expression. It leaks out. <laughs> Move on. So, in, in seven hours, I'll always say, any, any questions? I've got this compliance technique. I'm going to put my hand up. Because that's getting you to put your hand up. Mm -hmm. So, you've got to shake someone's hand. Tom, how are you getting on? See? You look at their hand and you put your hand out. The hand comes out automatically, it's like it's a built-in program. So you can run that and say, no, you go Not back. always when you get the whole thing and they don't do it, you need to do yeah. it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the first pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, so, the, four, the only four questions you'll ever get asked is, why, why, didn't, why, why am I even listening to you? Why, why should I do this, why, why that? What is it? How does it work? And what if I didn't? Those are the only questions you ever get asked. So if you're smart, you answer those questions up front. And in seminars, it's really interesting because the person asks why questions will ask why questions all day long. Because you get why people, what people, how people, what if people. It's really interesting. So if you answer those four questions, you just ask yourself, why, why, is, why, why was the scrappy scheme with it? Or why do you need a, why, why should you not have a 20 year old boil in the house? Uh, what happens if you do have a 20 year old boil in the house? How do you change a 20 year old boil and what would happen if you did? How much money could you save by that? You're padding out your initial bullet point. That's making sense so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just ask yourself why, what, how, what. Okay. Step four, add a resource box. So now you've got four paragraphs or, or a few words, four sentences, whatever. At the bottom, you add a resource box. A resource box is an advert. And this is where you bring in your unique selling point, your USP, your elevator speech, whatever you want to call it. Here's a magic formula. We help target market who are problem to objective. So, may I ask, sir, what you sell on Amazon? Karmats. Karmats, so you do. Great. So who's your target market? Everybody. Oh, 
that drives a car. Oh, I bet, okay. Shall we sell Help yourself out there. <laughs> so we help boy racers. Okay, so um, who are, what's our problem? What's a, what, what problem does it solve? Cars are dirty. Dirty cars, okay, and what do they want? Green cars. Green cars. Green cars. Green cars. Yeah. This is not the best example. So, okay, so <laughs> we help uh, car enthusiasts um, who are getting mucky carpets to have spotless, pristine interiors. That's better than a self car man. Right? You meet someone at a networking event, you go, what do you do? I'm a chiropractor. All right, coffee? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a civil engineer. I don't know what that means. Okay. <laughs> Far better to say, uh, so my example is I help small businesses who don't have time to do marketing to get more leads, more sales, and inquiries, and most of it's done for them. And people go, how did you do that? Which is the desired question that you want. So you develop this little USP, this makes a great headline, it's good in a business card, it's good in a website, but in this context, you're using it at the bottom of your article. So here's why this is important, what is it, how does it work, what if it did. By the way, we help these kind of people with this kind of problem and reach this kind of objective. With me so far? Okay. Then you had a call to action. To get a copy of my free thing on Carmat, go to blah 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 .com. To get a 60 trial pack of Herbalife products, go to blah blah .com. To get a free trial of Mailchimp for seven years, go to <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever it might be, right? So don't just leave so oh God, so often I see clients they get advertised in a magazine or they get some editorial in a magazine or the, the journalist features on an article. There's a nice wee article about them. There's no call to action, there's no contact details. What a waste of opportunity that was. You know, you go on the radio but you don't send the customers anywhere. What a waste of opportunity. They want the next thing. They're, 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 you're interested, you're helping them, you're educating, you're informing them. You're not telling them what to do next. Tell them what to do next. Does make sense? Mm -hmm. Everybody up to speed so far? Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. Next. Step five. Put these into an autoresponder. What the heck? An autoresponder. An autoresponder is a piece of software that will send a pre written sequence of emails or whatever to your client forevermore. If you want to. Every week, every month, every day, whatever you want to do. Okay? And there's someone in this room who can help you with that. <laughs> Free seven year trial. So, <laughs> so guess what? You put your ten articles as ten emails. So if someone visits your website and gets your free thing, they then get an educational, informative, no pitchy, useful article for the next ten weeks. Automatically. Automagically. You're not doing anything. You're right about it. You're right but your clients are still getting a touch. Does that make sense? Most companies are crap at follow up. Most of them are, right? Uh, true story, I went to <laughs> Christmas Eve. I never do this. Stupidly went to sleep with my glasses on the carpet. Don't ask me why. My wife brings in my breakfast on Christmas morning. Everybody say, ah. Right. <laughs> I hear, pan, 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 crunch. Oh shit, I left my glasses on the carpet. How many opticians are open on Christmas Day? No. So I'm over present. Oh, okay, I think it's like yeah. it. It sucks. So, um, come whatever it was, Boxing Day, when they, when they opened up again, I'm wondering about the opticians. I went to five opticians. The first one I went to, got my eyes tested, got my prescription, didn't like the frames, went to five opticians to find the frame I liked. How many of those opticians followed up? No. I'm a blind as a rat client, <laughs> floating about, I need glasses, I've got money in my pocket. Help me, help me, help me. One of these even got my prescription. How many of these five opticians followed me up? Yeah. None. Isn't that bizarre? Heresy. If you're a business, it's a hot customer. Madness. Not one of them followed me up. But you could have done it automatically. Just catch my email address, you've got me forever. Okay, next. This is the fun part, now it's really fun. Create 10 questions. What question could someone ask me that would open up that particular article as an answer? So if it's boiler scrappage, mm -hmm. what's the question that someone could ask you that would open up that conversation? Do you still get Aye. boiler scrappage scheme? Yeah. Brilliant. So you come up with 10 questions, the answers to which are the 10 articles you're going to have to With me so far? <laughs> right. What are you going to do with that, John? I hear you cry. You're going to get yourself interviewed. You give someone, possibly me, somebody else, to ask you those tips. So, let me ask you for a Today I'm sitting down and talking to Jill, who's an expert in property and buys left. Jill, let me ask you question one on my prepared cheat sheet, which you also have a copy of, because you know it's coming. Blah, 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 blah. And you go, well, I'm glad you asked me. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Article number one. Here's why it's important. Here's what it is. Here, 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 here. 
By the way, after three times, go to www.com. Ten times. Record an audio. You have a TV studio in your pocket. Call that I've got a smartphone. Record it. So me with Shireen and Janney on the Fred the show. We interviewed about clown phobias because the it film had just come out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Fantastic. So get yourself interviewed, right? Then you have an interview with an expert in that topic. I think your competition are doing that, probably not many. You now have an audio interview. You can put that, let me give you a website to go to, kunaki.com. Kunaki.com. Wonderful website. You upload your audio to kunaki.com, and kunaki will burn it, will burn it onto a DVD, put it in a box, and cellophane wrap it, stick it in a jiffy bag, label it, and post it anywhere on the planet for about three ninety nine. It's just a two day seminar I do on money, and this is produced by Kunaki. Nice branded, nice, nice thud factor when that lands in your letterbox. And they'll post it anywhere on the planet for me. So I don't have to fill my garage full of products, I just print them on demand and they go to wherever I want to, or to eBay or wherever I want to send them. Now you've got your audio interview. This also makes a nice business card. You get a business card, Jonathan? Yes, I do. Ooh, don't get them at networking groups very often. Now it's a wee bit different, now it's a bit differentiated. They can now take that home and listen to you in the car, listen to you on the DVD player, or whatever, and hear all about your expertise and your knowledge with no risk. They're not sitting down with a salesman, but well, they are, but it's safe. This makes sense? Kunaki.com. Mm -hmm. Also, this becomes your signature talk. Somebody goes, Stevie, could you come and talk to us about Green Deal? You go, absolutely, I have 10 bits of information already lined up. So now you've got a signature talk, which is easy. Next, take your 10 articles and submit them to all the article directors and all the blogs that are out there. There are articles, this is, this is gold, there are article directors out there. What's well, called ezinearticles.com. Ezinearticles.com. Let's say I, I run an easy an e-newsletter in renewable energy. And I'm looking for content from a newsletter. I've got 10,000 fans who want my newsletter every week. I can go to ezinearticles.com and lift your article and stick it in my newsletter, which then goes out to 10,000 people. But it has to have the resource box at the bottom. Even the Gallup does, da, 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 go to website.com. 10,000 new people are now seeing your stuff. What do, you what do you pay for that service? Nothing. I have to buy the article off of easynarticle.com, but it goes out to my guys for free, forever. Who knows where that could go internationally, 24 7. And then many blogs in your industry. So be a guest blogger, go and write for the blog, the, the person who runs the blog, go, hey, I've got, I've got 10 articles on, blah, 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 would you like them? Free market. Doesn't make sense. But this over. Okay. This is good. Turn it into a poster. If there's a referral opportunity here for a printer in your networking group. <laughs> Al? Um, so, 12 posters. Right, so take your top 10 list, your top 10, or even the top 10 questions, whatever. Just take the, the, the bullet points, put your branding on it, your name, phone number, email at the bottom of it, and give it, give it away as a poster. Now you have a bit of real estate in your client's kitchen, on their fridge. So when the pals are around at the house, there's your poster. Scrap it, boilers. I need a new boiler. <coughs> this guy, Stephen McGillop, phone number. Awesome. Can I take a picture of that? Yes, you can. <laughs> or seminars, hand out free gift, free bonus. Pack it in with the DVD, extra unadvertised bonus. Why not? Stick it up on notice boards. Go into Asda and stick it on the notice board. Okay. That's making sense? Are they liking? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Next, create a free report. Take 10 articles, put them into a PDF document, nice cover on the front. You get a PDF download off your website. That's one we did for an uh, electrician. Uh, sorry, a carpet cleaner. Glasgow Consumer's Guide to Choosing Carpet Cleaning Companies. It's not hire me, it's run these criteria first before you hire anybody in carpet cleaning. That's nice positioning. Okay. In the NLP world, people were doing, well, I do a seven day course, I do a 14 day course, I do a seven weekend course, I do a 21 day course. My report said 16 questions you should ask an NLP trainer before you book a course with them. Did that get me, did that get me every NLP prospect in Glasgow? No, but it got me loads. And it got me lots of nice testimonials from people saying, I got the right NLP course because I had your guide to use as my study guide, you know? So, but it positions you. You don't want to be in the fog, you want to be the lighthouse. 
right? So don't, don't compete in the same level. Go, actually, <laughs> you might be thinking about these things up here. So if you, guys, you can also print that off, do it like Angela's done our lovely handouts. Make it nice and shiny, spiral wrap it or slide wrap it, and you give it away. Nice wee giveaway. Or you can close it with your free DVD and poster. Then you hold a webinar. Google Hangouts, Facebook Live. How much do they cost? Nothing. <laughs> so guess what? Get interviewed. What questions will you ask? The 10 questions you asked earlier. What answers will you use? The 10 articles you wrote. How long does that Facebook Live stay up? As long as you keep your Facebook account open. How long does the YouTube article stay up? As long as you keep your YouTube account open. Your grandkids will see your YouTube video, if you want them to, right? <laughs> so get out there and send lots of traffic to it. Coaches, what's currently working like in coaching is free thing leading to webinar, leading to half hour strategy call. You might see that soon, wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> you never know. But watch another one as well. Next thing. Every time you send one of your articles out as a blog post or an article, ping all the social media channels. So tell all the social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and all the others that you're linked to. Okay, Tumblr, all the other ones that are out there. It's all <laughs> Just send a message out. Squidoo. Is that? Squidoo. Squidoo's kind of old now, we don't really use Squidoo anymore, but in the day it was good. Um, there's loads. Be bold, it must be bold. <laughs> 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 no, sorry, I'm sorry. Backspace. Just listen. <laughs> <laughs> Something at the door? Yeah, oh, I think so. Oh, sorry. Something at the door. Yeah, just outside. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, we're going to finish, guys, and we'll get you finished. So, um, yeah, every time you put one of these articles out, tell everybody. Because guess what? Those are backlinks sending traffic back to your website. To, and for, now, the backlink thing isn't as big an SEO as it used to be, but if there's 20 of those signs all pointing back at your website, Google then thinks your website must be pretty important. So this is free traffic. And I'll show you examples of how that works in a minute or two. How would you like to do an iTunes for free? Hmm. Would you like an iTunes podcast for free? Hmm. Say yes, John. Yes, I do. There's two you want to go to. One is called Spreaker. Speaker with an R. Spreaker.com. And the other one I like is um, Anchor.fm. Both of these are free. You can set up a podcast, and they will then list you on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, and about 20 other places for how much? Free. Free. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Now you've got a podcast. How would you like the Lake Sharma Nutrition Podcast on iTunes? Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> then you can personally get one of them. And then when someone does a search on Google, up comes an iTunes listing. <laughs> Plus iTunes is a whole new audience. Millions of people on iTunes, on the phone, on the iPod, in the car, on the TV, right? So why not have a podcast? What are you going to say in my podcast, Jonathan? The 10 articles that you've already written. Repurpose them. One piece of content spun multiple ways. It's got repurpose them. So for the networking guys, what I used to do with BNI, is I would go to BNI, I'd, well, I'd write my 60 seconds out the night before, then go to BNI, I'd deliver it. I thought it landed. I like it. I'll then post it as a blog post, I'll then shoot a video on a smartphone, and I've got a video, a blog post, and a six second presentation. Same piece of content, three different days, for it. I have over two years worth, currently, on video and on audio and written. So if someone says, can you give me this presentation? Yeah, which one would you like? Okay, 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. Why not, why wouldn't you do that? Okay, and if you know Gary Vee, mm -hmm. Gary Vee's made his careers through podcasting, so you can as well. Number 15, expand these 10 articles into 10 chapters of a book. So Lose Weight for Scotland was my 90 day weight loss program. Comes with four separate lists of CDs, quite interesting. Um, and it's a complete 90 day weight loss program based on my 25 years of being a hypothetical, working with a lot of weight loss stuff. But that was a two day seminar that I recorded and paid someone to transcribe. I never typed a word of this. And Amazon print this for me on demand whenever I want. Again, the ultimate business card. Do you have a business card, John? Yes, I do. <laughs> Useful. Okay. Here's another wee thing. Ever have trouble getting to a gatekeeper, getting past the gatekeeper, mm -hmm. trying to reach the guy you're, or girl you're trying to reach? Quick strategy, buy your own book on Amazon, gift wrap it, ship it to them. It arrives in an Amazon box. Do you think it'll get into their hands? Yes. <laughs> and inside there's a wee note that says, hey, how are you doing? Uh, um, forgive this in a strange approach, but uh, I really hope you enjoy my book and I'd love 20 minutes of your time. Link to a video on YouTube. Hi, well, <laughs> enjoy the book, and I'd love to come and speak to you sometime. 
You sent 10 of them out a week. <laughs> many, many appointments do you think you would get? Yeah. How, how unorthodox an approach is that? Because you're a published author and you came from Amazon. What does that do for your positioning? You could be working off your kitchen table, but it looks great. So, and I've now got this down to a weekend. You can write a book on the weekend, just so you know. Okay, so what does all this look like? You've got social media posts, you've got blog posts, you've got your podcast channel, 10 articles working for you, 10 videos on YouTube, a site to speak, a poster, a webinar, all driving traffic to a lead capture page, which says my bill for you, which captures the name and email, puts them into MailChimp, which follows them up forever with articles, stuff, offers them the book, offers them your products and services, forevermore. You have a marketing machine running in the background 24 seven, where you're out busy seeing clients. Useful, and the bulk of that is how much? Three. So you're producing for the 40% of people, see how I liked the end, wasn't it? Great segue. So the 40% of people who like to watch stuff, they get videos, webinars, and posters. The people who like to listen, audio interviews, sites, to talk to podcasts, guys look, hand stuff, articles, emails, blog posts, video posts, social media books. If you just did one of them, add a lot to your business. Do them all. Minted. Okay. Okay, what appeals to all the ways people like to consume information. You ever listen to an audio book in the car and you're like, I'm not getting it. And then you buy the book and read it and go, oh, now I get it. Or you watch a video or something, and then you listen to the podcast and go, oh, that makes sense now. Because you need to hear it the right way. So here's an example. JNL Plumbing Service. You know Jim Lawrence? No. Okay, Jimbo likes um, to go uh, snowboard. Um, we did five videos. One of them was in my bathroom um, with a smartphone. And we SEO'd them, we put them on Google 10 years ago, eight years ago, eight years ago. They're still top of Google. The stats on his website, traffic increased and um, 8,000 views so far. Cost us nothing to do. Easy. Easy, easy peasy. Um, Brian Castell, sign the line of Brian. Brian's one of mine. I did uh, two or three, three years NLP foundation skills. He then did 10 days of my NLP practitioner. I then took him through three Huna courses. He was a student on a master pack course, and then taught presentation skills, and then took him through a thing called the Fully Boot Bootcamp, which is my year long program. Thanks for asking. And um, he launched Headstrong NLP, which you might have heard of. He's now offering, oh, look, CDs, one to ones, intro days, courses, cut them. Mm -hmm. huh. <laughs> did he follow the model? Yes, he did. Did it work? Yes, it did. Okay? Um, his client of mine was on Dragon's Den. You might have seen these guys. Not last January, but January before. He <coughs> a key tracking thing called Zupo. Um, and they went to Dragon's Den and they got 100 grand from Peter Jones. Which is quite nice. Uh, then it was retracted the next day, yeah. which was not so nice. Um, but we did a split test out there on Facebook, for example, so you probably can't see this. But for a spend of $213, so about 180 quid, they got in front of 30,000 people. 30,000 people. Okay. Um, and they have a product selling on Amazon right now that's doing quite well on Amazon. Thank you very much. Um, and the drags then think, oh, they helped. Yeah. Even though they get all back, if I've actually spun that, where like, two Glasgow entrepreneurs got dissed by Peter Jones, but they rose from the ashes. Um, and they've now got the ex director of Dell as their backer. So the drags then think worked. Um, Shona Duff, you might know Shona. Shona's a business coach. Uh, we did a book for her uh, last August, and we got to number 10 on the Amazon Top 100 bestseller list. Um, same idea, she just sat down and typed out stuff about what she does, and we ran the play, and boom, now she's best selling off. Um, well, you might know Derek there as well. Derek and Geraldine wrote a book called Choose to Quinn, one of five. Um, publisher published it in December, and it was on Amazon at number 1.6 million in the charts. My question was, what has your publisher done for you, other than listen to Amazon? We took over, two weeks later, number one Amazon bestseller. <laughs> Can I just say? Um, We've created four best, five best-selling authors in the last year. We're all looking for another six, just a hint. Um, if I were you, I'd be thinking, I don't have time to write, John. I don't have time to write. Get someone to interview you. Or sit around dinner with your family and get them to ask you questions about boilers or printing or, and just capture it. Or if you ever are standing up speaking, capture it like I'm doing right now because it would be a wasted opportunity for me not to video this. So I am, right? Or I can't write. Fine, get someone else to do it for you, or get someone to interview you. You have a voice recorder on your phone. Just talk. When you're in the car, hands-free, obviously. <laughs> when you're in the car, just talk. Capture it, and get that content done. 
Understand? Now, to make it really easy for you, here's my free giveaway. If you email me at adminins.com.br, I will send you 10 pre-written articles with big blank spaces and they go, one of the things I really hate about blank is, and that's the rant article. And you can pick something in your industry that you hate. One of the things I hate about boring telecoms is, and the article is 90% written, why they just fill in the blanks? Because I found it hard to get content out of some of my clients, so I pre-wrote some stuff and gave it to them as a blank template. So if you want them, email me and I'll send them to you with my compliments. So your job is to come up with the top 10 list and just get something down. Ends well enough. Better to get it going than get it perfect. Right? Just get something down and develop it. Run the strategy. Write one article a day for the next 10 days. Really easy. Take you 15, 20 minutes. Pick a trusted friend or colleague to interview you. And you're off to the basics. If you want more, here comes a pitch. Uh, my Amazon bestseller book, can I just say? Um, it's 99p at the moment on Kindle. So, you know, that shouldn't break the bank. Um, it's full of really, really cool stuff. And if someone said to me, what would you do from scratch if you were starting again? The first five things I would do are in that book. That's why I wrote it that way. So, if you're going to get Kindle, grab it. It's quite interesting, I'm very proud of it. Um, and it'll give you some more useful stuff you can take away and use, because that's what I'm all about. So, that's how to dominate the field, make more sales, lifetime advertising that brings your clients now and forever. Any of you got any questions? Is your book on audio? Which book? The, that one? Yeah. Not yet. No. It is recorded, but it's not on. The other income stream, thank you for asking me, <coughs> is once you've written a book, you can do an audiobook. And you can pay twice. If you're really smart, you set up an Amazon affiliate link for your own book. And every time you put a link out, make sure it's your affiliate link, so you pay twice. You pay once for selling the book, and you pay again by Amazon for selling the book. Why not? Cool. Who, I can't imagine who wants to read a book about print. Do you know what I mean? Uh, life story. Ups and downs of running a print business. Right. Position yourself as, you know, let me tell you how the print industry's changed over 30 years. That's not the point. The point is to get the business in, but you're demonstrate the credibility and the authority and why they should come to you and not prod the print of the road. Right. Okay. One of the things I wrote down there, be a brand. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Yeah. Become a brand within the brand itself. Absolutely. And people grasp onto that. But it's quite hard to kind of develop something that people want to see, you know, every day or, you know, through your Instagram and stuff. It's because basically you're are you actually being someone else? You know, something that they think they should be watching. You know, so try to be as true as you can be as well. I think the minute you say, I'm a, you've blown it. Mm. So it's actually a network event. So what do you do? You go, I'm a, I'm a herbal life mm. rep. You've blown it, because there's thousands of them. Mm. I always say, I'm into healthy, active lifestyle. Okay, if you say, I help target market who have this problem achieve this goal, they go, really? <coughs> Now, if you have to know what target market they happen to be in, your target market is something like genius, and uh, yeah. now you're really relevant to them. Mm. That's much more useful than I'm a, you know, there's loads of business coaches out there, but that's not what Angela says. Mm. So that would be ineffective, right? And, and, and you're right, it's about the brand, you know, one of the reasons we're all here is because of this lady here. And it's her that we're buying, it's her experience, it's her willingness to help, you know, it's her, it's her personality, it's all these things. You know, we want, we want her, we don't want, ah, right. And it's the same with you. You've, how, much, how much time, effort, blood, sweat and tears have you invested in your business knowledge to date? You know, I was having that conversation with Steve Gillis the other night about um, the person in the industry who presses the wrong button and costs the company four million. Right. And they come to the boss and go, there's my letter of resignation. And he went, Resignation? I've just spent four million educating you. You're now the most valuable member of my staff. You're staying. You know, you've, you, you've earned your stripes that you're not shouting it from the rooftops. And you should, I know West Central Scotland will be a bit kind of little old me. Fuck that. Get it out there and let people know what you know. Because someone out there right now needs your help. And unless they see you, they can't buy from you. So with that, Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.